You're listening to the Weekend Sport Podcast with Jason Pine from Newstalk ZB. Massive Monday morning for Kiwi Motorsport. Liam Lawson became the 10th New Zealander to race in Formula One. He finished 13th for Alfa Tauri on debut in the wet at the Dutch Grand Prix. And a few hours later, Scott Dixon won the latest IndyCar race in Illinois, blitzing the field by 22 seconds to chalk up consecutive race victories and keep his hopes of a seventh Drivers' Championship alive. Let's bring in one of the leading minds in New Zealand motorsport, 33 years with the McLaren Formula One team, long-time motorsport observer, analyst and commentator, the legendary Bob McMurray. Bob, thanks for joining us on Sports Talk. Let's start with Liam Lawson. How happy will he be with his first Formula One outing? Um, hi, Jason. Well, <laughs> happy. Um, I should say relieved, to be honest, because obviously when he got the uh, the message that, you, you know, he's just about to to uh, launch into his Formula One actual Grand Prix career, I would imagine he was full of trepidation and all sorts of things, it's excitement, everything. But I, so, I, now it's gone, now it's done. He's done that. He's done the first one. I would think he was very happy to have um, navigated the whole really, really difficult weekend I mean, it, it was difficult from the word go until the word stop. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say he's very, very happy. And now he's probably working even harder to get himself ready for the next race around, which is Monza next weekend. Would staying out of trouble and bringing the car home have been his basic brief? Yeah, I, I think so. And I think that's all that he would be looking to uh, to do uh, certainly that's all the team wanted him to do they didn't want him to take any risks or anything like that okay he had a spin uh, a slight spin it was nothing he didn't really damage the car any but in the race itself he gained confidence from probably the fourth or fifth or sixth lap onwards i mean he had a, bit, a bad start in the race because um there was a he got a 10 second penalty but which was a team's issue because they released him into the path of another car um so that was for impeding, but he also had to queue up behind his teammate after a couple of three laps to do the pit stop. So and he was already behind everything else. Um, so from then onwards, he got sort of got a bit of confidence, got a bit of um, understanding of the car, and was going really, really fast. And he, I think, at about the twelfth or thirteenth lap, he was actually put the fastest lap up. So um, no, he he took a huge amount of confidence out of that. But yeah. Basically, the team would have wanted him to bring the car back in one piece, do as well as you can, keep your nose clean and get experience, get miles, get laps. And that's uh, exactly what he did. Pretty tough course, Bob, uh, from what I can understand. And it was wet. So how much more challenging would that have made his debut? Oh, I can't even ex- uh, go to explain how difficult that would have been. Let's, let, you know, from the moment he got in the car, he, it was the track was damp and, and drying and just, it was a mess. Um, suddenly he's out there with 19 other drivers who are all hungry and have all driven those cars and on those tyres a lot. They understand them perfectly. Liam had never driven that particular car in the wet before. He had never driven on those tyres before. He had never driven that car around that track before. He did some, have some experience of that track, but it's a very physical track. And suddenly he's out there with 19 other of the hungriest drivers in Formula One. But um, there was once uh, something, a little saying in Formula One that was coined by Ron Dennis when somebody else decided to join Formula One. And Ron said, um, he was the boss of McLaren at the time, and he said, welcome to the Piranha Club. Well, I think that's exactly what Liam Lawson would have thought as he launched himself onto the track with all these other cars around him. Um, wide-eyed, wondering, uh, but he came through it all. He, he did a really, really good um, a good start to his weekend on the practice day, and he just he, he excelled, in my opinion. I can't think of a more difficult or a sort of a in the deep end way to start your your first your debut GP Formula One than Liam's, and I really honestly can't think of another driver in history that's had to do what he did at that time. He's been racing Super Formula in Japan and doing that really well. In terms of the step up to Formula One, is it more about the car or the drivers around you, the other piranhas, as you've put it, Bob? Uh, Well, yeah, it's definitely about the car. 
the super formula car is not as fast as a formula one car but it is extremely fast it's probably the closest thing to a formula one car but when you get in a formula one car the, the systems you have to learn i mean there there are books there's one book which is about 150 pages just on the steering wheel that you've got to understand and there's all the other things that go with a car a formula one car far far more technical than anything else you know if you can draw an analogy and i think the only one i could think of is if he was um you know he just got his private pilot's license and he humped on a jumbo to go to singapore or something like that and he's sitting <laughs> down the back and suddenly the pilot says oh i'm too ill i need somebody to fly the plane and they say to liam you've got a pi- private pilot's license come and drive this jumbo I mean, it's it's a totally different animal. It does the same thing. It races, as uh, as he's doing at the moment. But wow, a Formula One car is a completely different animal to anything else in the world. That's given us great context. So it sounds as though Daniel Ricciardo's wrist injury will keep him out for at least the next two events. Uh, Italy this coming weekend, Singapore a fortnight after that. Should we expect Liam Lawson to drive both of those Grand Prix? I expect him to drive the next one, uh, certainly. Um, but you never know with Red Bull. You really never know. And and it probably depends on his um, experience at Monza. Um, but as I say, you never really know with uh, with Red Bull. They can swap drivers about like crazy. But when you look at what their alternative is, who else are they going to put in the car? Nobody else has any more experience than Liam Lawson now in that car that can slot in um, unless they try and bring in an old Formula One driver, something like um, Schumacher, uh, Mick Schumacher or something like that. But I can't see the point. The whole point of Red Bull having the Alpha Tauri team is to bring on younger drivers. Okay, Benny Ricciardo is not a younger driver, but he's in, he's in there as training possibly for the main team. So I think Liam is almost a shoe in for Monza. What happens after that, no idea. And honestly, I don't know how long it's going to take uh, Ricardo to, to recover. It could take two weeks, could take three months. The last Kiwi to drive Formula One was Brendan Hartley, 2018. Uh, can you compare Brendan to Liam? Um, I, yes, you can, uh, because Brendan obviously has gone on to have a fantastic career in, um, in driving sports cars. Um, but they were at different stages of their career at the time. Uh, Liam has been brought up in the form, in the Red Bull uh, sphere as a junior driver through Formula 3, Formula 2, put into Super Formula. Liam has been kept on board uh, and has been nurtured, if you like, by Red Bull. There isn't and there wasn't a place for him to step up into a, into a main game team like Alfa Tori or Red Bull. So that's why they put him at, uh, uh, in Japan to race there. So uh, I don't think Brendan had that opportunity all the way through. He wasn't quite nurtured as well as uh, Liam has been. Um, The problem with Liam, of course, is there isn't really a door opening for him to be into Formula One. This door opened with uh, the the, uh, damage to Ricciardo um, is a fortunate thing for Liam unfortunate for Ricardo, obviously, but suddenly he's got his hand, hand on the handle of a door and he's just opened it. And he's shown Red Bull what he can do. And now they've got a bit of a problem because they've got a perfectly good, eager, young driver just itching to get into Formula One with the talent. And if they don't give him a chance, if Red Bull really don't give him a chance, I think there's maybe one or two other teams that um, could leap at it. Exciting times ahead. We hope for Liam Lawson. We'll look out for Italy this weekend. Can we uh, shift across to IndyCars? Scott Dixon this morning. Just a masterful race in Illinois he only pitted three times, at least one fewer than everybody else. How difficult is that to manage, Bob, and still win a race like that? Well, clearly it's not that difficult to manage for Dixon. I mean, no, um, no. You know, you're, you're talking a driver that's twice the age of Liam Lawson here. You know, he's 43, uh, Liam Lawson being 21. Um, and and whenever I was listening to the drivers, uh, the other drivers' interviews after the race, and they were just saying, well, Dixon did a Dixon then. He's famous for it. He's famous for being able to save fuel and save fuel and save fuel. As you say, he did three stops. Others were doing five stops. And that's really what won him the race. He understands how fast to go um, and save fuel. Alan Prost used to have a saying, the idea to, drive, to win a race is to win a race at the slowest possible speed. And that's exactly what um, Scott Dixon does. 
he manages a race and he absolutely manages it perfectly. And um, any thought of Scott Dixon getting too old for it or retiring or whatever, I, I can't, it's just not happening, is it? I mean, he's come from 16th to first position. He got a, um, a another record at the weekend or, or this morning, actually. It, he won by 22 seconds. Well, that's a record in uh, modern IndyCar. The last record was held by uh, Jean Pablo Montoya, which was a 12 second uh, victory. And that was um, in the year 2000. So, you know, he keeps making records and he's not very far away from AJ Foyt's records of uh, 67 wins now with, with 55. Might not get to 67, but he's not going to be far from it. It's incredible, really. And, and you, uh, is it just experience? And, and that seems very a very broad term, just experience. But why don't some others do the same thing as Scott Dixon? Yeah, well, yeah, I'd probably they're all asking themselves that now. But don't forget, um, um, Scott has been with Ganassi for a quite a long time and he has built uh, a little um, team around him, Mike Hull especially who's been with him for many, many, many years at Ganassi. Mike Hull is a master strategist um, in in the team and and with him, with Mike Hull and the other engineers there, they are well experienced on knowing how Scott drives, how he can drive, tuning the car up to the way Scott can drive In other words, saving the tyres and saving the fuel and just being an expert at it. He's just an expert. That's that's really all you can say. He knows exactly what he's doing and you cannot count him out of any championship any year. I mean, it's only him now and his teammate, um, Alex Bilal, who can win the championship and they've... uh, They've got two more races to sort it out between them, and you know he's he's not that far behind in um, in points to uh, to Alex Palau. He could win it. He could win it this year. How will that work? Because they're both Chip Ganassi. They're teammates, right? They're one two. So do they take direction? Does does Scott Dixon have to have to bow down to Alex Palau? How does it work? Well, he won't. I no. No. <laughs> um, no, I mean, the, yes, Ganassi is one team, but they run three cars at the moment, or four cars, if you include uh, Marcus Armstrong um, in, in the car as well. Um, w- because Marcus isn't doing the ovals, he's only doing the, uh, the road courses. Um, so the teams are run almost separately within the same team. So I don't think there will be any collusion uh, to favour one driver over the other. That will happen when one driver is out of the championship. Uh, every team does it. Uh, Andretti, Ganassi, all sorts of things, they do it. If one guy's got a chance of winning the race and the other one or two or three drivers do not have that chance, they'll get in the way of other drivers. They'll drive like a team. But when it comes down to a championship like this, you're not going to tell Scott Dixon that he can't win a race and that he can't win a championship, another championship. And you're certainly not going to t- talk to Alex Palau and say, no, let, uh, let the old fella have a go here. They, they just won't do it. So, um, yeah, they'll be kind to each other in that they won't take each other off the track, but they'll just be racing each other as hard as they will race any other driver there. Exciting time at the end of Indy Cars and uh, for the next few weeks, hopefully, of uh, Liam Lawson and Formula One. So good to get your analysis and your insight, Bob. Thanks for taking the time this evening. Thank you very much, Pony. And don't forget, there's another couple of drivers had success at the weekend. Young Louis Sharp in Formula 4, in uh, in England, British Formula 4, Kiwi from uh, Christchurch. He leads the championship there. And um, Hunter McElroy in Indy Next uh, Championship. Another Kiwi, he's second in that championship. So we've got a few, a few uh, itinerants floating around the world doing good things at the moment. Yeah, we're not bad at this. Thanks again, Bob. Great to chat to you, mate. Cheers. Cheers, Pony. Bob McMurray, gee, I just love listening to Bob talk motorsport. I could just sit here for hours. It's not even my sweet spot, but I just love the way he contextualises it all and just, you know, brings in those sayings of his. And, yeah, just to, what the one about driving as, as slow as you can and still win the race. <laughs> and that's what Scott Dixon did. He pitted three times this morning. Other drivers, as you heard Bob say, were going in five times. And nobody else went in three times. Everyone went at least four, some five. Scott Dixon won it by 22 seconds. For more from Weekend Sport with Jason Pine, listen live to News Talk ZB weekends from midday or follow the podcast on iHeartRadio.